Welcome to Child Care Rockstar Radio. I am your host, Chris Murray. Child care leaders around the globe are breaking through challenges, leading the way in innovation, testing new best practices, and impacting children and families in a much more powerful and positive way than ever before. Each week, join me for interviews with early childhood leaders and experts that will leave you inspired to become the next child care rock star. Now, let's go. This is Child Care Rockstar Radio, episode 124, featuring Donna Nailway. Thanks so much for coming back and joining me here at the podcast. I am Chris Murray, your host, and I have a good one for you today, folks. Donna Nailway, owner of Kid Country in Manhattan, Illinois, outside of Juliet. And the title of today's episode is Stronger Mindset, Stronger Business. So we get to know Donna and her story, and I can't wait for you to meet her. Donna is a special person. She was a runner-up for our Child Care Rockstar Radio contest. Not only is it a podcast here, but it's also an annual contest that's been going for about eight years. And we celebrate you and we celebrate leaders at our annual event, the Child Care Success Summit, with an amazing best of the best contest. And the grand prize winner gets $5,000 and a trip, a VIP trip to Aspen Snowmass to come visit me and spend the day with me and go out to dinner and do all sorts of fun things. But we uh, just, you know, regardless of who wins and all of that, it's really about the transformations that take place. And Donna was in the contest. She was a runner up and she's amazing. So she shares her story on today's episode and she has a classic early learning business, one center, 109 capacity, suburban rural setting. And like many of you, she was facing life and not having fun in her business anymore and even becoming resentful of her business. So I'm going to give you a little bit more um, of what we talk about. But before I do that, I want to thank a friend of ours, which is Child Care Education Institute, CCEI. And CCEI is uh, sponsoring today's podcast. And I want to tell you a little bit about them. Uh, And actually, did you know that painting can help your students develop critical thinking skills, creativity, and motor skills? CCEI is on a mission to help teachers more easily incorporate art into your everyday lesson plans with their free online course. It's free. It's called Art in Early Learning. You'll learn the benefits of art in the classroom along with easy ways to add it into your curriculum. And the best part is your free course is courtesy of the number one trainer of child care pros, the accredited Child Care Education Institute. Claiming your free course is easy. Simply, simply visit cceionline.com. That's cceionline.com and select enroll now and use the code CCSC and the number five at sign up, CCSC5. And while you're there, don't forget to check out their 150 plus other courses, including my personal favorites on building resilience and creating center budgets, and so much more. All of CCEI's courses are web-based, so you can complete them on your own time from any device, and you earn CEUs at no additional cost. So what are you waiting for? Visit cceionline.com to claim your free course. And right now, we're featuring the free online course, Art in Early Learning. And don't forget to use code CCSC5 by 531. That's May 31, and so you've got most of the month of May here to get your exclusive access. Now, let's dive into this episode. Um, Donna Nailway shares her, her top enrollment strategies that she used to build enrollment, and she was not severely under-enrolled when I met her, but she's probably added 20, 30, 40 kids since working with us in the Child Care Success Academy uh, and added a couple hundred thousand dollars in income. Uh, She is celebrating 
a 20th anniversary of being in business. So she has a big hoopla planned for her community and for her team with her 20th anniversary. So that's super exciting. And we talk all about mindset. We talk about her personal, professional life and what she did and what she continues to do in mindset habits, because it's something you have to constantly feed to be a positive leader and a positive business owner and live a great life. And at the end of the day, that's what this podcast is all about. So without any further ado, I want to introduce you to my friend and client, Donna Nailway, here on episode 124 of Child Care Rockstar Radio. Let's go get it. Welcome back, everybody, to Child Care Rockstar Radio. I am so excited to have you back, and I want to introduce you to my friend and colleague and client, Miss Donna Nailway. Donna, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Doing fantastic. Where are you right now? I am in my office at my child care center in Manhattan, Illinois. Very good. And what is the nearest city? Are you near Chicago or where are you? We are about 35 miles south of Chicago and just southeast of Joliet. So, Okay. It always reminds me of the Blues Brothers when I hear Joliet. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Yep. We're a small little farming community. The community, the town now has like 7,000 people. I can remember when there were 300 people here. So, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> well, that's fun. So um, give us an overview of your business and just tell us a little bit more about what you do. Okay. Um, we Kid Country started in June of 2002 after a, a conversation the year before at my grandparents' house when all the family was together and we talked about what we always wanted to do in life that maybe we hadn't done. And at the time I was watching a couple friends, kids in my house, just so I could afford to stay home with my own children. Mm -hmm. And I said, I always wish we could have a, I could open a childcare center because I think you could do so much more with the kids in that setting. And the next day, one of my aunts called me and she's like, you think Manhattan could use that? I'm like, sure. She's like, we'll get some research done. She was ready to go into business. They had the property. So that was in May of 2019, uh, no, 2021, I think. Wow, I got my dates way off, 2001. Right. Um, (laughs) And we opened in June of 2002. So we literally built a building from ground up. Mm -hmm. I had to go back to school, get my early childhood hours in, write all the policies and do all of that. And um, so the building, we've got like a 6,600 square foot facility uh, we're licensed for 109 children. Okay. Um, we currently have like 138 enrolled. We have nice. 94% FTE. Okay. Awesome. Um, and here we are 20 years later about to celebrate our 20th anniversary. So I'm excited about it. <laughs> it's going to be yeah. fun. Yeah. So fast forward June, here we are almost to June 22 and you'll be celebrating 20 years. And you just yep. were telling me before we hit the camera to start that you're doing some major remodels of the facility. So that's super exciting and fantastic. Yes. Yes. Well, and needed. what do you, what's that? <laughs> they were needed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know those kids take a toll in the building. They sure do. <laughs> what do you have planned for your anniversary? Are you going to do a big community get together or what are you going to do? Yes, we are. So we're going to have an open house on Friday night, June 3rd. So we have, uh, we'll have some jumpy games and things like that for the kids. Um, We have um, glasses with our, we got a special logo done for our anniversary. So we have some glasses we're going to hand out with our logo and some special shirts. Anybody that comes that was a former employee is going to get a special wine glass that has a message about thanks for helping us along the way. Um, the community, the chamber is going to do a Facebook live from here and, um, some kind of a ribbon cutting or something that they're going to do. 
So um, it's going to be fun. So I'm looking forward to it. We're, we are reaching out and asking for um, all former employees and students to stop by and say hello. We've counted up that uh, so far we have served right around 1,500 children in the nice. 20 years. So we did that. Um, and one of the big things, um, I'm waiting to hear any day now, we are building actually doesn't have a sign on it that says kid country the sign oh. is a beautiful wooden sign uh in front of our parking lot next to the street so that people can see it but in 20 right. years our landscape being in our trees have grown so i contracted with someone to put a sign on the building and this thing's going to be like 24 feet wide on the front of the building and lit up and I haven't even shared with my aunt who lives behind us that this is happening because I just want it to be like this big surprise, you right. know, so um, <laughs> that'll be that. Yeah, that'll be done before June 3rd as well. So, <laughs> well, I forget the release date of this episode, but hopefully it won't spoil the surprise. So hopefully your aunt won't listen. Oh, there you go. <laughs> cool. Well, that sounds really, really fun. I love that. I love that you're you know, you're tracking your FTE, you're on it with your numbers, you know, it's 94%. We talk about those things all the time in coaching. And um, I just did a webinar on it. It's just knowing your numbers. And so that's fantastic. Um, and so is your aunt also part of the business? Or is she just kind of like a part? Like, is she a silent owner with the property part? Or are you, are you guys not business partners? So when we opened, we were business partners, and she owned the property in the building. And then we were 50-50 on the business side of things. Mm -hmm. So in 2013-ish, she retired from, oh, and then she was our cook because she came from a banquet hall. Okay. So she was our cook. So um, in 2013, she retired from that. She was still my business partner. They still own the building. And then I approached her in 2016 and bought her out completely in 2017. Okay. So January 1st, 2017, it became all of mine. And um, there are days I'm like, what did I do? And then other days. <laughs> <laughs> so, but a uh, fun fact, I guess it could be your funny story. Yeah. Um, I also met my husband in 2016. And on our second day, we went to the local zoo and we sat on a bench and I just laid it out there for him. Like, this is what I'm doing. I'm buying this business. I'm going to have this huge building I have to take care of. And this is my life. Like you need to know now because it's not changing, you know, right. and he still laughs about that. And he happens to be a um, supervisor for a high school and he's in charge of their uh, maintenance and custodial. So he has been a godsend to me in this business. So I joke that he is our supervisor of maintenance and custodial here at Kid Country because <laughs> he spends a lot of time here doing things. So that's <laughs> and I don't know how I would have ever made it without him, quite right. honestly. So right. yeah. So we have a lot of those kinds of relationships in our tribe, similar in another Donna is Donna Jensen coach mm -hmm. on my team and also her husband, Jeff, who is their maintenance guy. And mostly okay. he just like kind of, you know, fiddle faddles around the property yeah. and, you know, messes with stuff. So right. that's right. You know. <laughs> that, that is Chet's dream job when I let him retire from the school. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got about two more years if I can keep him that long. <laughs> From I love it. So, yeah, I love it. Well, that's great. And then do you guys, um, as far as your home life, you've been married, so you've only been married six years. You have, you guys have kids. Is this a second marriage? Just tell me a little bit more about what's going on at home, kids in college. I don't anything <laughs> that you right, want to share. Right. Yeah, that's fine. We yeah. have, um, between the two of us, uh, yes, second marriages. So we each have brought to the marriage two boys. Okay. So, um, we have a 31 a 27 and a pair of 23 year olds. Oh, fun. So, um, we got married in 2018 and, um, 2017, we bought a house together and moved into this home with three of those adult children. So, um, then they started out moving out because we kind of gave them a, here's your deadline of when you need to. <laughs> right. <laughs> Launch kids. Yep. Yep. Launch. They did not choose college, which is fine, Yeah, but it was time to like, 
face the reality here and, and move on. So yes. um, we're now empty nesters um, with two grandchildren. So uh, we have a granddaughter, Peyton, who just turned one. And then our grandson, Alec, is about eight months old. He was born in August. So okay. um, so that's been a fun year to add grandbabies into the mix. So yes. um, yeah. Cool. And do you have any dreams of potentially opening a second location? I do. Um, these are all new dreams since joining the Academy. I will. <laughs> we, we tend to have that effect on people, Donna. I know. I know. So um, I am trying to decide if I want to expand my current location because I have enough property. We're on two and a half acres. So um I could just make my current building bigger or go into a neighboring town and build another one. So I'm just kind of evaluating that um, I'm on the tail end of getting a, the final pieces of my team together here at this location um, with expansion in mind. And then I won't have to be here and I'll work from home. And um, great. So my goal is by the first of next year, I'll know which direction I'm going and start pursuing that. Right. So, yeah. Love it. So, well, that's very, very cool. Tell me a little bit more about the brand of kin- Kid Country. Like what are the things that really set you apart or the things that you really kind of market with your brand? Um, one is we're a silver circle of quality center with the state of Illinois. Um, it's their like quality rating system. And um, there are two other centers that have Manhattan addresses and we're the only one with any designation. Um, And we've been held that since 2015. So um, I'm pretty proud of having that. It's not easy to get. So Um, so we market that pretty heavy. Um, The other thing, honestly, what I think we are successful is our connection that we make with the children and the families. Um, We truly do put the children first. And I have from day one, I never worked in childcare till I opened my own center. So I've never worked a day in somebody else's center. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't aware of the centers that the common practice was just not follow licensing regs and, you know, do things in my opinion, inappropriately. Right. Um, we want what's best for the kids. So we really communicate with the parents. Um, I empower the teachers. It is their job to call parents if somebody's sick or if there's behavior issues so that they develop those relationships with the parents and and build that trust. And I think that has been huge for us through the years. Um, When somebody puts on the local Facebook page of, you know, what center to send your kid to, we have parents that haven't had a child here in probably 15 years that will still comment kid country hundred percent, you know, nice. so that, you know, I love that obviously um, makes me feel good. <laughs> and I still try to, you know, maintain that. And one of the things that we do is we overstaff our classrooms. So we have one more person in every room than the state requires. And I never knew another way to do it. I did it in the beginning because I like to sleep at night without worrying about things. Yeah. And it, and my kids were enrolled here when we opened and um, it just to me was the right thing to do. So I've continued that. And um, I think that's another one of our big things that and our amazing playground, we have over an acre of a playground and all of our children can be outside at one time and still be, you know, within the regulations and stuff like that. And Mm -hmm. we get out, we, we take the country part of our name seriously and we are out as much as possible. <laughs> so <laughs> I love that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, those are all the three things that, um, you, you know, your website is conveying and I love the, the high quality. You're really the only one with that, the family connection, putting kids first and your amazing playground. And we take country seriously. I love all of that. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I love the clarity that that brings. And, um, the fact that you are the high quality game in town, which many, most of our Academy clients are in yes. that same, um, they play in that same. That's one of the things I love house. about the Academy. It's people that are serious about childcare and doing the right thing. Yep. You know, they're not our competitors down the 
street that just are there to make a dollar, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I guess it's easier to run a program that way technically, and it is more profitable, I guess, but I agree with you. I mean, I would want to do the right thing for families and kids and be able to sleep at night and have a really extraordinary, excellent business. So if you're going to do it, why not do it right? You know? Right. 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 I don't want to hide when I'm in town either. Like I love it. And that, you know, when I go to the, that was another thing when Shut and I started dating, we'd walk to the local ice cream place and he's like, oh my God, you're like, you know, a rock star here. Yeah. It's Miss Donna, Miss Donna. Uh-huh. Donna. You're a local celebrity. Now you're going to be even more of a local celebrity right. that you're on this exactly. podcast. Exactly. <laughs> so he just loved that because he never had that small community feel, you know, but it is that, I mean, we've gone to Disney World and had a family walk up to me at Disney World. Really? So, Yes. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so it's crazy. So I love that. I mean, yeah, I guess it's not that surprising because I've run into people all over the world as well, or just mostly in right. this, this country that's like random. Right. Oh, I, yep, just, yep, you know, exactly. Cool. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk about marketing just a little bit because you did, I mean, you already talked about your message and a strong marketing message. So I love that. What have you done since joining the Academy that you feel has contributed most to your enrollment success? Um, In the marketing side, I would say um, getting automated and the CRM. So the child care CRM has been huge. We've had that now. I I don't even think we've had that a year yet, but maybe it was a year and I'm losing track of time. Mm -hmm. Sign of my age, I guess, but um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Either way, um, that has been a game changer, like to not have, you know, your paper visitor forms, your, you know, where's that information on that family that called earlier today or last week, and we're not dropping the ball on things. So, right. um, and getting my team and getting the lanes and um, together has been huge. So, um I have a director of enrollment, so she's our CRM lady. Mm-hmm. And then um, I thought outside the box, and um, I had a virtual assistant, and it just I tried two different companies. It just was not working for me. And when I left work one day, because it's, I saw that I needed that extra person because it was going to be a vital part of the team for me to be able to step away. And I was frustrated driving home. And it dawned on me that um, my most amazing assistant director had left uh, last April to move to Texas. And I knew she had a new job, but she wasn't 100% happy with it. So I just sent her a random text. I'm like, hey, would you like to be my new virtual assistant? And she's like, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah. And we exchanged emails and texts for a week or so. And she's like, I'm going to do it. And game changer game changer nice. she already, I don't have trainer she's helping train my two new directors right. and she knows everything already she hit the floor running so right now she's only part-time while she uh, builds a house and then she's once she moves into her new house she'll come to us full-time so um, that has been amazing so wow. um, which I accredit the academy as well for teaching us to think outside the box and take those opportunities as they come across the door and It's just like, hey, you know, you can do this from sunny Texas while we're in cold Chicago. But (laughs) I love that. It's worked out great. So that's fantastic. That's going to be a writer downer for the audience and especially fellow Academy members, because I'm not sure. And I know anybody else that's done that. But that is a huge. um, Right. Right. Awesome strategy. So way to go, Donna. Very, very cool. Um, so I love the enrollment specialist or enrollment director is fantastic. And of course your VA. So it sounds like a big part of your success has also been just looking at your roles in your company and making sure that you have them in the right, you have right people, right seats, but you also have the lanes to find and you're developing that part of your company so that it can help take more off of your plate. Right. So again, since joining the Academy, that's all been like, oh, wow, we can, I can get other people to do some of this stuff. <laughs> like, oh, I, you know, I don't well, know. It's, it's funny. People just think they have to do it all. Yeah. Right. And the yeah. whole mindset of like, seriously, when I joined the 
Academy, I was ready to, how do I get out and just get out of debt and save myself? I, I just was really frustrated with childcare. And, right. you know, I took to heart everything you guys teach and was like, now I'm re-energized, which I can absolutely see in my staff, the difference now that yeah. I'm but committed again. Mm -hmm. And so just looking at things differently and that I want to be working on my business because I have done the same job now for 20 years. And just like anybody in any industry, you want to be able to move up or do something a little different. So the day-to-day -day is not what I want to continue to do, but I love having this business. So I want to work on it with the expansion and stuff. So I've definitely been thinking about that in these roles like I see my director of enrollment and my director of personnel becoming the corporate people for enrollment and personnel. So if we have more than one location, they just handle it across the board for both locations. And I wouldn't need to rehire and all that. You know, then we just need center directors. So I'm definitely looking far more big picture things than I've been doing the previous 18 years before I found you guys. So. <laughs> Well, I'm really glad you found us. Yes. And I'm really glad that you've worked on the whole financial piece and your mindset and your leadership and your time, getting your life back and your energy. Like most of all, yes. what I love is that, you know, we've got a refreshed, happy Donna coming into the building and then it's just the whole vibe and the culture will reflect that. So right. I love yes. that. Um, yes. Let's talk about mindset. How are you feeling in terms of, I mean, you mentioned you're more energized, you're thinking about potential expansion and how are you, what are the things that you feel that you've done in a consistent practice or that you've just gotten from the Academy in terms of mindset that has helped you make that shift? Um, for me, like that tribe of, and just going to the meetings and, or your the weekly Q and A's or the pod calls, whatever it is, just hearing people who have done it, like, and aren't like crawled under their desk crying. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> they're happy with what they're doing and that this can be done. This can yeah. be done as a successful business. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a business that you're just paycheck to paycheck. You can do this, you know, so that mindset just has been huge for me and ha knowing that there's people out there like, hey, I can do this. So for me, I say practices that I do, I totally do the gratitude journal every day. Um, I did, I had bought a certain type of gratitude journal and now I just have a blank one and I write three things down every morning. Mm -hmm. Just gets you off on that right step of thinking positive. And some of them can be stupid, like, you know, heat in my house or, you know, yeah, simple, sure. simple things, yeah. and, you know, versus, you know, the big picture things, but, um, it just has definitely gotten me off on the right step and having people out there with the knowledge, like just, I would say like deciding to do a CRM or go to pro care or something like that prior to the Academy, it was always about money. And getting into the academy, figuring out, get your FTE up there. I I have changed every single process this building does wow. since in the last, I joined in June. So it's been almost two years. Mm -hmm. Everything has changed and we are automated on everything. Um, selfishly, some of it so I could work from home. But then I started to see not only the benefit of me working from home of us being just more organized. Um, yeah. And the money that it costs to run those programs is a drop in the bucket. Like it really, because doing all of these things brings us more enrollment, keeps our FTE up there. And I was a center that didn't track FTE. If people ask me, I'm like, oh yeah, we're, we're like at 90. But when I sat down and looked at it, we were more like at 78 to 80. And now we're at 94. Well, that's the difference in being able to afford to do these kinds of things and not right, right. there. So um, anybody that ever says, oh, the money is like, oh, my goodness, do it. You'll make 10 times, you know, the return on that investment. So um, right. I completely agree with that. Yeah. 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 Because I was just talking to somebody. I just we welcomed a new growth member in yesterday and it was you know, she had, they had $400,000 on the table 
and had never done that math. And then it was like for a really pretty small monthly for the equivalent of one child's tuition, you can come in and really retool your business right. from, from scratch. And not only that, but kind of get your life back again and feel happier and, you know, just all of that energy and that vibe. And, um, exactly. That's a, that's not, not go home every day feeling overwhelmed. Right. Which then yeah. you're taking all that energy to your husband and your kids and all of that. Yes. And yeah. So I love that. Um, and I wanted to ask you with regard to the FTE piece, because I think a lot of people gets, they get caught up in that whole thing if they're not used to the verbiage. And so when you looked at it originally, and then you realized how much gap you had, how big your gap was to get full, um, was it operationally, did you change your policies where you started limiting part-timers or did you just charge more for part-time or how did you kind of pick up that money and fill up the school? Did you just take more full-timers? Like what was kind of your strategy to fill it up once you discovered all of this? Um, I just, we just focused on that. Like um, our goal is we need to get this place full again. So, uh, you know, obviously when I, I joined, we were, the pandemic had just started um so we had just come off of a closure <laughs> right so it was kind of hard to track those numbers but uh-huh. learning all of that stuff i figured out like just keep them coming like we don't stop like just right. keep enrolling just keep going and um and then committing some staff to that like this is your priority like not this day to day stuff or this person needs this or that like we need to hit this goal we need to be here and even now they know, um, you know, what I expect for fall, what do I expect for summer right. and they're doing it like, you know, yeah. um, it's so just, I guess you get to a certain level, you feel as if you're pretty much full. Cause there's only like maybe one full-time spot, but there could be four part-time spots, yep. you know? Um, and you kind of stop focusing on it yep. and you just automatically tell people when they call, they have a wait list. Well, now. I try to get, we get all their information before we ever mention a wait list so that we still have them in our database when, you know, we have openings in that age. So yeah, yeah. that was definitely, and it was eye opening to do that math. Um, mm-hmm. Even just the percentage, like now I don't do the math, but if I see a room at like 80 something percent, I'm like, oh, <laughs> like that should be over 90, you know, so <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And then a lot, a little known fact that we always teach, but a lot of people don't know when they're new is that all the, like every, that top 15% is all profit. It will almost all come to the bottom line because you've covered all of your fixed costs and most of your variable costs. You got a little bit of labor and a little bit of food, maybe some supplies, but it's almost all profit and nobody puts that together. And since I already overstaffed, that staff that's way better for me to have a full room so yeah <laughs> you know I'm not adding any staff cost at all exactly. so yes it definitely and I think there's guilt in um child care center owners and directors in making money because we are charging families yes you know and whatnot so we're all have these huge hearts and yep. there's guilt in it and the academy has helped me with that as well and understand that you know, I don't do this to go home miserable every night. That's not my goal in life. Um, but it's also for my staff, like to have the good teachers, we need to be, you know, paying them well and yeah. the retention programs and the benefits and everything. Um, and we can't do that if we're not charging the correct amount of tuition. And so this year in January, I raised significant 10%. Um, and I don't think a single, I had a couple ask their options cause they couldn't afford it, but they didn't like, um, leave, they didn't leave and right. they didn't blame me for doing what I had to do. Sure. And I had far more parents come in and tell me whatever it takes to keep so-and-so teacher because I love her, right. I will do. Wow. And, um, so, <laughs> you know, we are. Yeah, that's been a game changer for me too. Like your mindset, like it's okay for us to charge what we need. And I had a parent a couple of years ago tell me the fundraisers, she's like, honestly, charge what you need to charge and stop doing the fundraisers. Right. And I took that to heart and we haven't done one since, um, 
and we won't um, yes. for that same reason. Like, just let's tell people this is what it costs and be done. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I think they appreciate that too. Like everybody gets tired of being nickel and dime to death. So, um, you know, you can budget, this is what it is. And, you know, I know we're more expensive than our close competitors, but we have more to offer. So, right. You have lower ratios. You have the silver circle quality. You have this amazing, but you have a lot more than the competitors. So people are willing right. to, to pay for it. Not everyone, not everyone's a fit, but that's okay. Right. But I, exactly. I love what you said about guilt because a lot of people have that. And we don't talk about that a lot on the podcast. And I think that is pervasive throughout the industry, which is we are caring for children and we have a heart much, you know, very much heart centered piece. And so sometimes people do feel like they shouldn't make money at it or they run their business like a charity. And then, um, you know, they end up closing their doors and they can't train right. and pay their teachers and give all the beautiful benefits and great bonuses and all of that, that you're giving now to keep great people. So, right. um, when you get on that treadmill, it, it is not a healthy place to be. So I'm so happy right, that right. we were able to gently pull you <laughs> to another place. It's so good. Absolutely. So speaking Absolutely. of that, then not only all of that, then you said, I'm going to go for child care rock star award and I'm, which is our <laughs> annual contest. And you had an amazing story that you told on video and in your stats and your entry. And it was amazing. So you were chosen as a finalist, came to Vegas, got on stage in front of almost 900 people and told your story. And so what was that like and how, you know, why did you decide to enter or what kind of just give us the story around that? Um, that was overall, it was just an awesome experience. Um, I actually decided to enter. I kind of waited. I kept thinking, no, no, no. <laughs> and I think it was something uh, Donna was my coach at the time. And I think it was something she said in one of those last podcasts. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to try to whip this together, you know? Um, but it honestly was a very interesting process for me as well to realize that's the first that I like started to write down what have we changed since right. I joined the Academy. Um, and that was eye opening because we changed everything. Um, <laughs> um, not in that. And like patting yourself a little bit on the back of you look what you've done look what yes. you have managed to accomplish so um and then the flip side of that of having to actually write a speech which I've never like I get up in front of our families and and say a little bit but it's not a speech it's usually a thank you type of a thing so writing and memorizing a speech that was my first experience with that so totally getting me outside my box um and getting on stage. And for me, it is far harder to speak in front of a group like that when my loved ones are in the audience. And my husband, it was there. And my youngest son, he absolutely insisted he was coming. He was not going to let um, me do this. He wanted to be there. He's my Aww. one of my biggest cheerleaders. And he... So... so I made it works for him to get there. And so having them in the front row was kind of like, you know, <laughs> but then, because I got out on the stage and I started and I stumbled and I lost my train of thought and I kind of looked at my son and he um, looked back at me like, oh no, you know, and I just told myself, you can do this. You want this, you know, your stuff, just go. Right. And the rest of the presentation went just fine. <laughs> and I was so excited to have done that. I felt like, you know, that was a huge accomplishment just to get up there and say that stuff yeah. and, you know, to put myself out there. So yes. um, I kind of liked it in the end. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> and I made a lot of connections that way. Uh, the people yeah. that came up to me afterwards and was like, you know, you so inspired me. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting that, that like really hit my heart, you know, um, so it was overall an amazing experience and I would totally recommend anybody to do that. So thank you. I'm so glad that you did and you got a little cash out of it. So that was, yes, good. I did. You didn't yes. win, but you were a runner up yep. and you did amazing. And I love the process of what you described about 
not really realizing until you sit down on paper guys, cause we're not ones to celebrate our wins. We're just, we just keep no. going. Right. And we usually focus on the negative and not on the positive. That's just how we're hardwired as humans. But when you sit down and you actually look at what you've done for the year and you make a list and you're like, Holy cow, look what I did. This is so amazing. And you start just feeling, and that helps your confidence too, as a leader and an owner. Right. And then the networking and the people and the inspiration and everything that you put out there. It was, uh, I loved seeing you do that and your entry was amazing. And so thanks for sharing that because we want people to of course, come to the next one in Nashville yeah. and tell their story yep. and enter the contest because you'll get, whether or not you get chosen as a finalist, you'll always get something out of going through and yes. looking at everything you did with your team. Yes, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. So, I love that. Cool. Um, let me ask you the classic question of the podcast. I haven't asked it in a while. How do you define a childcare rock star? Um, I would define it as the people in the industry that are really out there for the kids. You know, the ones that really are doing the best that they can with the resources they have to um, help this next generation of children. Um, you know, that are going to be the ones running the world here soon. So um, I define it as those people that, you know, anybody that's showing up every day, giving it their best yeah. um, and, and making connections with the kids. That's mm -hmm. how I put it. Yeah, that's great. I love that. Um, books, any books or resources or podcasts or TED Talks, anything that you want to share um, with the audience that you love? Everything you do. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I read. <laughs> so I have your books, but listening to your podcast, that's new that I've started doing the podcast. I'll admit that. Um, but I've listened to a few of those in uh, reading your books. I find, um, yeah, I'm still feel, I mean, I'll be two years in the Academy and I still feel like a newbie and I'm still uh, working on assets and things like that. So I don't have a lot of time to spend on like, Outside of that, I'm still like really focused on that. Like I've got things I want to get done. And um, so I'm doing all your stuff all the time. So, <laughs> well, darn it, Donna. I hate that yes. answer. Isn't that horrible? <laughs> <laughs> Not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, thank you for saying that. And You're yes, welcome. we have new branding for the podcast behind me. So you can see some of our books. Very and, nice. Uh, thank you for being a follower and reader. And of course, most of all being with us in our tribe in the Academy. So love having you with us. Uh, any final thoughts to share with the audience before we say goodbye? I think just mindset is powerful. Like it is amazing when you get yourself in the right place, what your team will do for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, yeah, everything about the mindset, do it get yourself in the right place and it'll all just flow afterwards. So couldn't, where I'm at. couldn't have said it more. Yep. It all <laughs> starts with mindset mm -hmm. guys. And we keep saying that over and over. And so, but it's a constant struggle. I mean, even for me, like I just have to have, you know, great reminders and people in my life that we just keep each other positive and just keep it going. Yep. So especially during exactly. COVID, I, 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 yeah. I had forgotten that you joined us during the height <laughs> of COVID. And so yes. June, 2020, like, oh my God. Um, and that was a really mm -hmm. great time to join because we all banded together like nobody's business and helped each other survive through that yes. process. Yeah, the mindset and I was, like I said, in my rock star presentation, I was not in a good place when I joined emotionally, like I was really struggling. I had 25 people counting on me and, you know, the government telling me I couldn't operate. And it, right. it was a struggle like emotionally. And um, so, yeah, that mindset, getting that piece going, realizing I got the vision again in the passion. And then it has trickled down through the building easily because they can see the difference in me. My husband sees it, my staff sees it, you know? So um, yeah, and waking up every day, getting yourself in that right spot and go to work and rock it. <laughs> yeah, and you're doing it because you own your morning because you're gratitude journaling every morning. And that was great that you shared that because that's a great start to mm -hmm. a, a, a good day that you're going to be like, you know, here's what I'm yep. grateful for. And 
So I love that. So thank you so much, Donna Nailway. Thank you. From Kids Country in Illinois. We loved having you here on the podcast at Child Care Rockstar Radio. And take care, everyone. Go take action for at least one thing you heard today. And we'll see you all next time. Take care and God bless. Bye. Bye.